So ladies and gentlemen, thank you and welcome to the developer's track. I'm excited to announce Valentin Hewn from PTC. He's the Vice President of, Engin of Innovation Engineering. Welcome virtually to our room. And we are going to be talking architecture scale AR for a metaverse future. You use the M word. We were just talking about metaverse and if people <laughs> like that word or not. All right, we're going to be going here in, uh, as soon as I get the thumbs up from the crew here. Yeah, this is a funny okay. part. You know, I, uh, you, you see Welcome. a couple of our names are related with some other people using names too. Um, I'm seeing a mouse cursor going over a window screen. So first of all, I got the thumbs up. Um, I'm very Let's sad go. that I cannot be over there. I, I would love to speak in front of an audience. Um, I'm here at home right now because my wife is about to give birth any day. And um, I hope that is a good excuse for not being there over in California right now. Thank you for being in this talk. Um, and this is a PTC Reality Lab talk about architecture scale AR for the metaverse future. You can advance. And um, as I just mentioned, uh, 2013, we started with the reality editor back at MIT. And that tool was um, a tool to understand and control the physical world better around us. That uh, work was so successful that um, 2015, we open sourced the reality editor as a tool for everyone to play with. 2017, we added spatial programming into this tool. And uh, all of that work together, um, we brought it to PTC and where we started 2017, the PTC Reality Lab. In that lab for um, ever since, we are advancing this kind of research. Um, our mission is to bring a new technology that is three years plus and that really advances us in connecting and understanding the world around us better. And so 2020, we have published the Favoria Spatial Toolbox as an open source project as well. And pretty much all the work that you will see in this presentation is open sourced. So please advance. Today, I want to talk about um, four interesting things. And my hope is that uh, these uh, ideas give you uh, a little thought about where we are today and, um, and how we can change some of our technology stepping forward. The first thing I want to talk about is a 3D sandboxing technology that enables a distributed metaverse. The second thing I want to talk about is Spatial Toolbox. That is a platform that makes use of these sandboxes to create distributed spatial applications. I want to talk about spatial envelopes that uh, help to orchestrate these applications and data flow programming that allows you to connect these applications and create all kinds of logical connections and also connect to the physical world. And all of that together is what we uh, talk about when we uh, think about the architecture scale AR. We can go to the next slide. So I want to um, meditate a little bit on where we are right now. So uh, probably a lot of you uh, use game engines to build all of these XR experiences that we love to see. Um, and game engines were originally designed for a very specific purpose, and they're kind of shifting to the XR space. And uh, a lot of these experiences that we can build with them are for single players in a single platform. There's a single app version. Everyone who participates in that space needs to be on that same version. There's a single entity that owns these applications, and there's a lot of propriety platform code. And all of that leads us to a point where currently we can only think about exchanging file formats, you know, exchanging 3D objects as a file format or GIF, uh, JPEG images or so on. So all these ideas that we have around blockchain and all of these technologies where we de declare ownership over something, we're actually declaring it over files and not so much about um, parts of the entire metaverse. You can advance. So, Let's illustrate that a little bit with, uh, with a little example that we've created here. So what you see here are two entirely separated 3GS applications. There could be two entirely separated metaverses, 3D games, whatever you have. And if you want to bring them into the same visual space, into the same context, you end up with the problem you see illustrated in this video. They can be in the same space, but they actually can't intersect 
They can't find each other visually. They can only overlap. And that's really a fundamental problem because there's no 3D software as of today that actually was made for that kind of intersection. So what if we cannot just exchange file formats, but we actually can intersect entire worlds, entire metaverses, and build one big distributed metaverse? So that is really a question that I'm looking into for eight years now, because I think this is the core problem of our entire industry. Can you advance? And so um, last year we solved this problem. And um, I mean, it might not be the perfect solution that you want to build up your entire uh, uh, company on, but it is a research path forward that really works and that helped us to advance the toolbox. What you're seeing here is not uh, like a 3D demo from the 90s. That is actually something you might have never seen before. These are five entirely separated 3GS applications. It can be three entirely separated metaverses, computer games, whatever you have. And these uh, five entirely separated um, 3GS applications perfectly intersect with each other and actually appear in the same visual space. And we achieved that through something that we call WebGL proxying, where we allow each of these applications to be sandboxed, yet right into the same WebGL context to, to intersect in this way. And we use that as a foundation to create a dis, uh, distributed uh, metaverse um, technology. So you can advance to the next slide. And so here you see this whole idea in action. Um, if the video is playing, yeah. Um, so what you see here is our laboratory in which we can experience a multitude of applications. There can be chat applications. There can be applications that allow us to control machineries, um, technology that allows us uh, to start a system of systems that run the robot. Uh, we can have more text messages in the entire space. It's very scalable. And we can, for example, also learn about how to operate a multi-axis robot. All of these technologies run on their own very own stack. It's their own sandbox applications. And none of the developers who build these have to actually interact with each other. This is truly a web of distributed spatial applications. There is no version number, versioning number of the system. It lives as it goes, similar to the web browser that you're using to browse the internet every day. You can advance. And so we built a tool around this and we call this tool the uh, Favoria Spatial Toolbox. It has this little pocket here. And in this pocket, there are multiple applications to control and to understand the physical world around us um, and to interact with the world. This is kind of like a sandbox tool. You can build your own version of it and you can build entire application stories around that uh, Favoria Spatial Toolbox. The entire tool is open source for everyone to use and everyone to modify however you like. And there is a spatial programming capability built in at the core of the Favori Spatial Toolbox that allows you to connect these applications to the physical world around you and really drive the world around you. For example, you see here a full application of running a feeder station, an industrial application, um, and you can clearly see how this entire application is wired up. And you can also see that it's live because if I disrupt this connection, you see how the machine stopped. Okay, we can go to the next slide. And so we built a couple of tools to further advance these applications that are built with these 3D sandboxes. Here you see something that we call a sequential spatial envelope. A spatial envelope is, is a subset of an application that you can open up and you can drop a couple of applications into that, sun, into that envelope. And then the envelope is basically um, orchestrating how these applications work together. For example, what you see in this uh, demo here is a timeline envelope. So every kind of activity that is happening with the applications that are inside that envelope is tracked in a timeline. And we use that uh, for spatial analytics in, on the factory floor. We have created three different kinds of envelopes, a procedural envelope, a timeline envelope, and a path envelope. And all of these envelopes, we use them for research in the factory. You can advance. Okay. 
Here, uh, we bring all of that together in one interesting demonstration. Anna, one of the researchers in our lab, she's dropping a path envelope onto our, our, um, MR, um, our robot. She's connecting that path envelope to the robot so that the envelope takes control of the robot. The envelope is its own application, and she's now dropping three um, um, path applications into the space. They're all sandboxed from each other, but the envelope is uh, putting meaning to all of them and connecting them together to form the path that the robot should uh, consequently drive on. And because there is the spatial programming at the core of everything Toolbox enabled, she can just drop a button into the space and connects that button to the first uh, mission point. And uh, when she activates that mission point, the robot is driving around, uh, along that path the same way that it was designed and um, programmed in that little demo here. This is very powerful because you can mix and match any kind of application and bring them into meaningful uh, relation to each other. The applications are sandbox and ordinary web applications. So you can build any kind of application you want and make it and expose it to this entire metaverse or universe. Can ex ex um, go to the next slide. And so a lot of what you see here is um, augmented reality content, content that you have to be at the location and um, you have to be there to interact with these machines and with these systems. But what, we, um, what we're also looking into is um, giving remote operators and remote experts insight into factories and allow them to make meaningful um, connections with uh, on-site workers. And we realized that, um, that uh, virtual reality is a really good tool for that, but not just to dive into a pre-recorded situation weeks ago. No, we actually want to give you real-time insight into the factory. So what we did, we scanned our factories and we scanned our lab and we, um, we calibrated cameras into this lab. And when you advance to the next slide, uh, you can see how uh, these cameras now give, you can advance. And when you, when you uh, dive now into this scenario, you can see how a remote expert is now actually able to freely fly around in this entire uh, floor and co-locate himself with the uh, factory worker at location. And this is uh, actually all running in a web browser. This is also honoring distributed um, networking infrastructure rules. So nothing here is centralized. That web browser is actually asking different kind of um, machines to, um, to uh, put together this view that you're seeing. We're also seeing that the spatial toolbox is entirely integrated into this demonstration. So um, I can program systems from remote and I can look over the shoulder from my coworker, Ben here. And when Ben wants to analyze this machine, he can just drop a, a graph into the space and, and I remotely can, can see what Ben is seeing. So we have a much better experience working together through a remote lens. So this is a beautiful demo and um, it has one little cavity. The cavity is that it really takes a long time to set up. It takes us around two days to put all the wires into the space to uh, create, um, put the infrastructure into, this, into the space and then calibrate everything and so on. Um, that's really difficult and probably costs a lot of money. So we were wondering if this, there's a better way for us to do this. So we can go to the next slide. Um, and so we were thinking about uh, something that we call an instant metaverse. How is it, is it possible to create this same kind of experience in a much more rapid way? And we, we took ourselves to a challenge. We said, hey, can we do this maybe in five minutes, what we otherwise would do in two days? Can we do in five minutes, scan an entire space, deploy five people with their mobile phones to interact with the space, um, deploy five sensors that give us eyes on the ground and allow five remote experts to dive in and give guidance to those people at the location. That's meaningful for first responders that need instant um, feedback from somebody who might know more about the scenario. That's really good for instant um, analytics on the factory floor. And that's also really interesting where, wherever you have an experience where you want to have somebody else look over your shoulder. 
And so um, our plan was when we started that challenge that we would spend two minutes to scan the space, two minutes to deploy the sensors and one minute to log in. I want to give you um, the perspective of where we are right now. So you can go to the next slide. Um, we use a technology that PTC developed uh, in-house um, and it's called the Favoria Area Targets. This is a remarkable piece of technology that I would please invite you to all try out because it is, um, it is a way for us to scan massive amount of spaces in a very high detail. And um, this high detail indoor scanning allows us to also localize you in a very high precision inside that space. And if you click forward, then we can see the video. And in this case, we're seeing the technical uh, un um, museum in Vienna. And there is an experience where you localize yourself in the entire museum. And um, with that application, you basically get uh, guidance in the museum. And I have, I have to say, I've got lost a couple of times in museums and something like that is the most useful thing you can ever think about. And that's possible with the Favori area targets. But we're using it in a different way. Instead of showing you content in space, we use it to permanently in real time calibrate our own cameras and give you the experience that I showed you before. You can advance to the next slide. Valentin, I apologize for interrupting. Uh, I wanted to give you a little notice since we are running way behind now due to the technical difficulties. How about I have uh, two, one more or two more slides? Okay, perfect. Yeah. I just wanted to check in with you. Thank you very much yeah. for your patience. No problem. Thank you. Okay, you can go to the next slide. Okay, and what you see here, if we click play, you see uh, my colleague Ben who is using the Favoria Spatial Toolbox. And the toolbox is asking, hey, is there something around me? No, there isn't. Should I scan something? So he starts scanning the environment and we create something that we call a world object. The world object is the crown truth of the entire space that everyone uh, calculates against. So he's creating this um, world object by scanning through the space. And you have seen things like that everywhere on the conference. So um, I'm just talking over it in a, in a moment, it will, it will fast forward a little bit. So Ben is walking around in our space and he is, um, wants to get remote expertise on this engine piece that he has here. And um, because he, he, he needs to maintain this engine piece and he would like to understand if somebody else can help him. Um, and so it took us around one minute to scan this entire space. So we're already one minute in of our five minutes that we plan to do. He's generating the data set. And that takes only a couple of, of, of uh, seconds. And once he generated, it's very short, uploading target, and instantly everyone who's locked into this entire, into that uh, metaverse is instantly there and can instantly collaborate and interact with everyone else. You can turn the Favora Spatial Toolbox into a virtualizer mode that gives eyes on the ground. And you see that two of these devices here, James, another researcher, he's placing one of the uh, iPhones into the space. Ben is, how, is using a tablet and he permanently calibrates to the space. We can advance to the next slide. And so now what you're seeing here is a real-time volumetric point cloud that gives you eyes on the ground. One is stationary, the other one is mobile. And so I can interact with Ben. I can see where he's walking through the space as I record his uh, motion over time. And Ben can give me insight into the space. For example, if I want to check the inventory of this, um, of, of this locker here. And you can see the fidelity of this vol volumetric um, video that, that I'm as a remote operator able to see now in real time. Uh, he can actually just point his phone at this locker and show me what's going on. And this is a volumetric video so I can zoom in, I can move around and see, look at this from any perspective, however I would like to have it. All of that is distributed within the network. There's not a single core um, server that is driving this experience because it's all built up on that 3D sandbox capability that Toolbox has at its core. Uh, ben is able to leave uh, messages into the space. Um, just the way that you saw that in the other demos before. And the remote operator, in this case, James, is able to open up these messages 
and uh, to communicate that back with uh, with Ben. Okay. And I think this is a wonderful way for us to bring down the entire time, these two days of setup into less than, than actually less than two minutes. I think it took one and a half minutes to set up the entire instant metaverse. And that really allows us now to enable everyone with using that kind of capability. So you can go to the next slide. Thank you, Valentin. Let's do a little wrap up here. Okay, I wrap up. So um, we're using that technology, that instant metaverse. We're using it for um, recording and understanding tutorials for others to use. So for example, here you see another researcher in our lab, Anna Fuste. And Anna is um, um, showing something how to advance, uh, how to repair this uh, machine. And that is a recording that is recorded at location. And if you click again on uh, the next slide, then you see how then Anna is now a recording, a volumetric recording that allows us to, um, to replay what Anna is doing at location. And uh, it's a really interesting mix between Anna as a volumetric point cloud. And when you just move to the right perspective, you see Anna also as a video recording. These are really some very advanced uh, ideas that we're using this instant metaverse for. And if I would have more time, I could finish this presentation and I could show you what we do with spatial virtual sensors that allow us to understand and analyze the space around you and give you actually uh, logical um, building blocks that you can use to uh, drive um, results out of um, if a person, for example, is entering the sensor you could switch on your lights and all of this stuff. We're building a lot of technology into that various spatial toolbox that allows us to, um, to really, really give you control and understanding about the space around you. And if you go two slides forward, I want to give a big thanks to my team. And that is my very last slide, I promise. And I will not show you all of these beautiful demos that we've cre created as the key piece in the end. And um, can you go one slide backward? Because this is, I think, at least for me to be able to not show the most uh, amazing piece that I wanted to show you in the end, because I'm running out of time. Uh, I want to at least give a big shout out to my team. Uh, this is the most ex uh, amazing team and I'm very honored to work with this team. These are the best researchers you can find in the industry. And I'm so blessed that I can work with these people in my team together at PTC. And please, uh, now you can go to the next slide. Please get in touch with me. I'm happy to share a recording of this entire talk with you that has it in its full length. And I'm happy to share that with you so you can see the entire talk. Please contact me on LinkedIn, this Valentin slash Hoyn, and also find, out on, find us at PTC Reality Lab. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for waiting uh, for, for this talk and the technical difficulties. And um, I hope you have a really good time at the conference and see you around. Thank you so much, Valentin. Let's give him a round of applause. We appreciate your patience.